Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I want to talk about the different Kotlin scope functions. So we have let, also apply and run. And there's also with, but that's really the same as run. Because I feel like many of you who just started with Kotlin don't really know the difference between these functions and they just find these very confusing. And I just want to show you in which cases you should basically choose which function here. And I want to start with the most commonly used one, which is let. And we usually use let for null checks in Kotlin. So let's say we have a variable here, um, private var number, nullable integer, and we set it to null. So you might think now, why can't we just choose an if condition to check for null here? So if we use if number is equal to is not equal to null, then let's say we want to choose we want to create a second variable here, val number two, and that is just equal to number plus one. You can see we get an error here. Smartcast to int is impossible because number is a mutable property that could have changed by this time. So why does this actually happen? Because we checked if number is actually not equal to null. Why does it give us this error here? So the problem here is we declared this number variable globally. That means we don't really know here at this point if there are other threads accessing that number at the same time. So what could happen here is um, that we check if number is not equal to null. Okay, it is not equal to null. We go inside of that if condition, but before we actually enter this variable declaration here, another thread actually sets this number back to null. So then we would still be inside of that if condition, but that number would be null. And since Kotlin is a null safe language, this is something that can't happen here because whatever happens here in our code, whatever variable we want to access, we must be sure that it can never be null. And one way to solve this here is to simply assert this number is not equal to null here. Then this error goes away, but we don't really want this because still if other threads access that number and set it back to null when we're inside of that if condition, then this would simply crash here because this operator will just make our program crash if we if it is null. So this can't really be the solution here. The solution is actually the let keyword. So what we can do is we can actually let's leave this number two here and just replace this if condition here with number question mark dot let. And then we replace this number with it. And that now works. Why does that work? So we only execute that let block if number is actually not equal to null. That's what this question mark operator does here in Kotlin. And then we have access to this it, which is basically just number. And in this case, what this let function will do is it will kind of save this number at the time we actually call this let function. So if we change number during that let block, then this won't affect this it. So that is basically just the state of that variable of that of that object here at the time we call that let function. And that's why this works now. And you can also use this let function basically as an assignment to a variable. So if we declare a variable here and set that equal to this let block, so variable x for example, then this works. And if we hit control Q on that x, we can see that's of type unit. And the reason that is of type unit is because that let block just returns the last line of it. And since this is just a variable declaration, this is basically of type unit. We could, for example, simply write a number two in the last line, and then x would simply get whatever is saved in number two. So if we now hit control Q here, that is of type integer. And of course that is still nullable because if number would be null here, then we wouldn't even go inside of that let block. Then we would simply assign null to this x variable. But that is basically when you should use let every time you need to make such a null check that would otherwise throw an error. 
And if you want to use the else case, so if this would simply return null, then you want to assign something else, then you can do this with this Elvis operator here. For example, just assign three to x. Then we can get to the next scope function, which is also, also is very similar to let. So you can also just call that on whatever object you like and you simply get a reference, a parameter here inside of that lambda block to the object you actually call that also function on. But the difference to let is that also does not return the last line as let does it. Instead also will return the object it was called on. So let's say we declare another variable here private, private var i, set that to zero and we write a function here get squared i and that function would simply square whatever is saved in i. Let's say you also want to increase i by one after you actually made that calculation inside of that function. Then you could simply put an also block here. So we also want to do something else and increase i by one. So we can now still use that single line expression here and set that equal to or set that function equal to that expression rather and still actually do two things with or actually two and still actually do two things here with i. So on the one hand we square it and then we also increase it by one. And if we would use it here, so you can see we again get it, that would just re uh, refer to this i squared. But if we want to increase this i, we would simply need to use this i here as well. And as I said, the difference to let is that also will now return the object it was called on. So it will re this function will actually have the result of this i squared, that is the object also was called on, and not at the last line of this also block. So this is actually not that often used as let, but I still want to explain the difference here. And now we get to another scope function that I use very often, which is apply. So apply can also just as every scope function be called on every object in Kotlin and apply is super helpful to just um, modify objects. So if you need to make a lot of changes on a specific object, then you should use apply. So let's say we create an intent object here and we use apply afterwards. Then you can see this time we get a this reference here to this intent and not an it reference. So we don't need to prepend it all the time if we want to refer to this intent. Instead, it is as we would be inside of an intent class here. So we can call all the intent functions directly without putting any variable name before that. So we could put, put an extra here, what we frequently need to do with intents and for example, a string extra, we can put another extra, for example, an integer, whoops, an integer extra, we could set the action of that intent to something. And that will now simply return the intent here with all these functions and all these changes applied. So we could simply save that in an intent variable. And then for example, start an activity with that. And that is also very useful. Let's say you have a person class and you want to change a lot of properties of a specific person. Then you can just use that person, call apply and directly set the name, the last name, the age to whatever you like without writing person.name is equal to person.lastname is equal to person.age is equal to. So you get what I mean here. And now we get to the last function, which is run. So now with this apply function, you can see this returns an intent here. It simply returns the intent with all the actions applied. If we use run now, that will also give us such a this reference to that intent. And now check that intent object here with control Q. Now this ha is of type unit because run is basically the equivalent to apply the same way as let is the equivalent to also. So that means run will do the same as apply, but it won't re return the object it was called on. Instead, it will return the last line because that is a unit here 
this intent will be of type unit. So if we would write this here, which would be would not be very good here because we should rather use apply here. But this now is the last line and this we re refers to this intent. Then this is of type intent again. So run is really nothing I use very often here. I use apply much more often because you want to apply a lot of changes here to a specific object, but then return the object you actually wanted to put these changes on. There's also with which I never used in my life because it's the same as run, just a different signature. So we could use with here and then a new intent object and then do something with that intent object and we still get a reference to this intent. That's the same as run and I prefer run, which I also don't need that often. So these were the five Kotlin scope functions. I hope this was understandable for you. If not, put your questions in the comments. And if it was, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. And if you're looking for more advanced Android courses, then check out pl-coding.com, which is my website. There you will find more advanced courses. Just check it out. You will like it. And you will also get a bunch of free stuff there just by creating an account. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.